Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're talking about the week of December 23rd this time around. This is the next to last one of these, the penultimate uh, what to look for in the night sky for 2024, and then we'll turn it over. Of course, next week when we do it, uh, the week will mostly be the first week of January. Uh, so anyway, this is our last full week of December, and we've got the moon fading away, so we don't have a lot of moon interference, but we're going to attract the bright planets to a certain degree anyway. Uh, last week, we talked about, you have Venus. You go out in the evening sky just after it's dark, and you see Venus shining brightly in the southwest. A big, bright object, right? And what it does this week is it slides past a couple of our favorite stars, stars we talk about all the time. The reason we talk about them all the time is because uh, planets and the moon slide right by them because they're close to the ecliptic. They're close. The ecliptic is the path that the sun appears to trace in the sky against the background stars. You see the sun moving as a background star as we orbit. We, we project the sun against these background stars and we see uh, where the sun is and the stars that lie very close to that path the planet we've, we've been talking about the fact that the solar system is a flattened disk but it's not perfectly flat uh, and the planets can and the moon can then slide by those stars be very close to those stars so those stars become some of our favorites and these two stars in the back of Capricornus uh, Nashira and Deneb al Gedi, tail of the goat uh, is how we would translate that and, and we would say these two stars Look like a little a little fang bite. Look like a little snake bite. Uh, Deneb al Gate is the brighter. It's going to be the easternmost of the two stars, and it's 2.9 magnitude. Pretty good bright star uh, for us to see. Not a you know not a, a spectacularly bright star, but anything that's brighter than third magnitude, we can see under most conditions. Uh, Nashira at a 3.7 magnitude star, we're still going to be able to see a lot of the time. If you got some light pollution or you got a little bit of haze in the, in the air, you have a harder time seeing Nashira. But you see those two stars. This week, Venus. On the evening of the 26th, Venus is just above Nashira. Then on the 27th, it moves over to Deneb al Gedi and is still in the region on the 28th. So Venus is tracking across. It's in prograde motion, moving east against the background stars. And very easy to tell this week as we watch it move against Nashira and Deneb al Gedi, relatively bright stars. So 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, uh, right on out this direction, we can watch. Well, you can't read that anymore. You couldn't read it anyway, but uh, as we watch it track across there. Now, if we move from these stars and from Venus, we go more or less straight north. The first star that we get to that's brighter than the other stars, you look up and you say, let's just track to the north and let's see a star I can see that looks a little bit brighter than the surrounding stars and pops out, is Sad al Sut uh, in Aquarius, where uh, where Saturn is right now. Remember, uh, remember <laughs> that Deneb, uh, it, it, Deneb, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Deneb al Gedi as we, uh, uh, points. So Nashir to Deneb al Gedi sort of points in the direction of Saturn, and Venus is moving in that direction. So we're going to, that's what we said last week, we're going to track Venus as it moves towards Saturn uh, in January and gets close to Saturn. It's going to be a nice pairing of those two bright planets. So it's something to keep watching as we're tracking across this direction. But we're going to pop up to third magnitude, 2.9 magnitude, uh, Sad al Sut, and it's about. 11 and a third degrees uh, north of Nashira and Deneb al Gedi. So you, you see these two stars, uh, Deneb al Gedi and Nashira, and you pop up to the north about 11 and a third degrees. Remember, for most people, a fist held out at arm's length is about 10 degrees. So it's about one fist, one, one fist width to the north. You see this move up that way. And so uh, that's that you'll come across that al Sut. Uh, 2.9 magnitude star, almost identical to the Nab al -Gedi. So check that out and see if you can see those two stars. Uh, just north of there, just north of there, uh, four and three quarter degrees. So half a fist width onto the north, you've got the bright globular star cluster M2. We like globular star clusters too, uh, because they're, they're, they're densely packed. You know, you got half a million stars densely packed together in the sky. And, and so they look like a, a bright fuzzy patch. And you can often pick them out, sometimes with your naked eye, but you can often pick them out with binoculars and give that a try here. And take your binoculars and scan north of Sad al Sut and keep Sad al Sut in the, in the bottom of the field of view and see if you can't see that fuzzy patch to the north. Use your averted vision. Use the rods on the sides of your eyes. So look over to the edge of the field of view and use your rods to see if you can pull out M2 
Uh, nice globular star clusters. Remember, globular star clusters, these half a million, groups of half a million stars gravitationally bound together in orbit around the center of our galaxy. Uh, so they, they form a halo around the center of the galaxy, uh, a big group of these things. Now, if we keep moving on up, uh, sorry, thinking about sitcoms from the 70s, singing that song, but never mind that. Uh, 15 and three quarter degrees, so a fist and a half further on up, we get to the really bright 2.4 magnitude, brightest star of all of these that we've looked at, Enif, in Pegasus. So we've got the great square of Pegasus, and the great square of Pegasus uh, looks like this, not at all the scale compared to what we've been doing, but there's the great square of Pegasus, and there's Enif, is that star that comes off uh, the bottom side, you, you, sort of a check mark that comes off the, the, the bottom right side uh, of the great square of Pegasus, uh, south and west. And so Enif is a 2.4 magnitude star, moved on up. So we've gone from Nishiran to Dev Algedi to Sad Al Sut, on up to Enif. And now another four degrees, four to six degrees, uh, to the north and the west of Enif is globular star cluster M15. Another spectacular globular star cluster. Binoculars should show it as a fuzzy patch if you've got good dark skies there. you got a small telescope, by all means. Uh, scan with your telescope from Sad Al Sut up to M2 and from Enif up and across to the right, up and across to the west, uh, to M15, and see if you can't find those globular star clusters. All great. It's all great. Uh, good stuff we've got. Now, remember, we just said uh, Deneb al Gadian this year are pointing the way where Venus is headed towards Saturn, and Saturn's in Aquarius, and Saturn this week is sitting very close to the star 83 Aquarii, and long time ago, you've been watching these, these little shorts, these video shorts, uh, for for the year for the fall uh we've had uh we've had saturn uh, in the area of 83 aquarius before saturn doesn't move real fast uh, you know it's not a real quick mover against the background stars because it's out there far enough a and it's gone from prograde motion to retrograde motion back to prograde motion and so it's been in this vicinity for a while but this week uh if if you want to see if you want to convince yourself that saturn is moving this is the week to do it and i use binoculars 83 Aquarii, 80, the 83 star Aquarius is about 5.4 magnitude, somewhere between 5.4 and 5.5 uh, magnitude. And that's really right at the edge of what you could see with good dark skies. So if you've got real dark skies, you might be able to see it. Uh, but uh, binoculars are going to help you out a lot. So use your binoculars uh, to, to see this, and you see Saturn sitting just below there. It starts the week about a little more than two-thirds of a degree uh, away uh, from the star, and by the end of the week, it's just a little bit more than a third of a degree. So it cuts its distance between the Saturn distance between Saturn and 83 Aquarii gets cut uh, in half this week as Saturn tracks against the background star. So you get the real sense of Saturn's motion and how much it's moving this week if you watch it. So if you have good clear skies all week, great. Uh, and so uh, Saturn again, Saturn is off to uh, remember Sad Al Sut is in Aquarius. Saturn's over here on this diagram. So Saturn. Uh, remember, Nashira and Deneb pointing the way of Venus's motion is, is headed towards Saturn in this direction. So Saturn's sitting out in here. It's the brightest object in that region. It has that yellowish glow, glow to it. You can tell it's a planet, I think. And so you can check that out. Get your binoculars and see if you see the faint star right next to it and watch it move this week. Uh, so great. Uh, on the 24th in the morning, so Monday night into Tuesday morning, uh, about 1.30, 1.45 in the morning, the moon's going to rise. The moon's a beautiful moon, about one-third full and it's sitting near the bright star Spica. And so it sits near this bright star, Spica, like a real bright star in, in Virgo. And so you'll see Spica sitting down below the moon there. If you track off to the, to the, the west and the south, uh, let's wait for this area to get up a little bit more. Don't try to do this at 1.30 in the morning. Uh, let's do this at 2.30 or 3 in the morning. And you'll, you'll have a good clear view of Corvus. Uh, if you've watched these things for a while, and I don't know why you wouldn't have, but if you've watched these things for a while, you know that I like Corvus too. It's also one of my favorite things because it sort of pops for me. When I look at this region of the sky, it's devoid of other stars, and I see Corvus pop out as this, uh, this quadrilateral here, which I've drawn poorly. Uh, but you've got this quadrilateral uh, that looks like that. The brighter stars... Our beta, the beta star down here, which is 2.7 magnitude, so uh, a little bit brighter than Deneb al Gedi and Sad al Sut, a little bit fainter than Enif. So you can compare that that way. And Jemma, 
uh, the, the gamma star that's up in this corner is 2.6 magnitudes. So those two are, pr are brighter than the rest. These are third magnitude stars. So all four of these stars are, are, are comparable to the stars, the brighter stars we've been looking at. A little bit brighter, a little bit fainter than Deneb al Gedi, for example. So we see this nice quadrilateral pop out at about three and a half degrees uh, straight south of the beta star here, you'll, you'll come across another really flying globular star cluster, M68, but it's pretty far south. If you live north like I do, remember, I'm in the central part of the United States, about 43 degrees north latitude is where I am. And so at about 43 degrees north latitude, this is pretty far south to see, but still binoculars might pull it out or a small telescope. Uh, wait later and maybe wait another night past this. So wait later in the week when the moon uh, fades away and moves on to the east and gets out of our way just a little bit. And I think that's enough for this week. It seems like plenty to me. There's more. We could always do more, and we could always look for more things. But look what we got. We got three really fine globular star clusters for you to go look for. We got Saturn moving against a faint background star that you can detect. We got Venus tracking towards Saturn with its motion easy to detect against the Neb al Gedi and Nashira. And uh, yeah, that's it. You know, uh, some other stars we can we can try to find in the moon. Uh, near Spica, making a good pairing one night. So, as always, everybody, thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great week of observing ahead. <clears throat>